in and out of juvenile justice. Um, by the time I was 16, I had that realisation walking up the back lane of Redfern and just seeing fights, syringes, kids playing in glass and just insane, you know, behaviours like that would be you know, frowned upon in any space. And when I say that, it's... um. There's a lot of trauma behind that as well. And yeah, neuroscience and a lot of data now, factual, shows you that that's passed on from generation to generation. And if that's been through a heap of deep trauma, and if anyone wants to understand the trauma, watch the first Australians or Australian Wars. It's a true journal of, um, or you know, a true history of Australia's history through the journals of Captain Cook, Arthur Phillip. So it's not what I'm, I'm going to say something because I'm Aboriginal. This is what they wrote and they wrote it to the Queen and the Queen was involved at that point in time. And it's, it's crazy because we expect women and children to be protected now. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Our women and children were raped, murdered, and treated badly and treated a specific way. Mm. And mm. yet we'll have statues in major parks around of these people that have written and there's facts around it now. So watch those series if anyone wants to watch those. Mm. And, it, and the craziest thing about it is we'll operate from the level we know. So I don't have no ill will towards non-Aboriginal people. I'll tell you why, because I go to Aboriginal communities and I'll ask them, do you know who Hitler is? And they go, yes. I say, do you know who Pemua is? And they go, who's that? So even Aboriginal people don't understand it. I don't expect non-Aboriginal people to go and research it. Mm. But that's the opportunity to watch it. And if you're a female especially, I've had so many females reach out after and say, oh, you know, I'm appalled and I cried during it. Mm. Um, I didn't know that's what truly happened in Australia's history. And they should take every statue down and, you know, there's so much in amongst it, but that's a whole different story. But, and, but it is. But you know, it's it's something that I'm intrigued about. Is mm. I, as an Australian man, know so little about mm. Aboriginal culture in general. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I not want, taught in schools. No, yeah, I want true. to know. True. I, and and I'm stoked that that I can have this opportunity to talk to you. Yes, because I want to learn about. Love that. About Aboriginal culture in general, like I and I and I just I'm I'm genuinely ignorant. Right. If I don't make the effort to learn, no one in my culture is going to teach me. Absolutely, and, and and I think that comes from shame oh, of what of, of what happened. This too, like I think some people don't even have that time to think, Mark. To be honest, I, I've been you know, I've spoken to so many people, right, mm. and. <laughs> They don't even start their own health and fitness journey yeah. or, you know, oh, I want to start a business or travel to a location. So that's that, that's what's important to them. Yeah. But it's been on the table. And I ask people at workshops, we do leadership workshops, how long has that been sitting there? All my life. I've thought about it all my life. So the last thing a non-Aboriginal person is going to do is go home and from here, you know, get home from a long day at work. And research Let's look Aboriginal up Aboriginal history. culture. It's just not going to happen. I'm happy to share the link with yourself, drop it in the yeah, actual um, podcast. Yeah. And for those that watch it, it's actually a really cool series. It's shot really well. I, and I'm one of those people that if it's a great series, even if it wasn't Aboriginal, I'd say to people, watch this, it's actually sure, cool. Sure. But it's got a lot of um, context and you can learn a lot about Australia's history in a three-part series. And then I would just, yeah, it's, it, it goes back to give context to why people – that don't have the emotional IQ. So people go, why do they do take drugs or alcohol or fight or get violent or go through that? That's passed on neuroscience data now, 100%. You can look that up yourself around how it's passed on that trauma from generation to generation. So Aboriginal people at that point in time, we didn't have the tools, the strategies, the tips. The, mm. the campaigns that you see these days, social media wasn't around. So we had no way of regulating our emotions and the anger, the stress, the the judgment built up within ourselves came out through that violence, those riots with police and you know, us versus the rest of the world. And we had that little boundary and we felt safe within it. And it's crazy that we as Australia could live like that and it still happens in this day and not just with Aboriginal communities but you know, disadvantaged communities where people have grown up without the right role modelling. I seen a kid when I f last visited my brother, 13 years of age, um, probably 13, 12 years of age, and his mother said, stop playing up, you little mother 
and starts swearing at him and he goes, F you, I'll smash you to his mum at wow. 12, 13 years of age. And I'm looking at the jail going, six years from now, this kid's going to be buying these wars, guaranteed. And then people say, oh, I'll lock them up, throw away the key. What if we role modelled them mm. into becoming better human beings? And the reality is this, if we go to a domestic violence level and we don't choose to do it, someone's daughter's not going to be here any longer. How much is that worth for me to go in and have that conversation with the community so that our community is better for it? Priceless, right? Oh, man. It's, yeah, it's, so I had this this thought about this, and tell me what you think of yeah. this idea, right? Do you think that perhaps it seems to me that there are there's this there's this culture that we that we have in Australia, right? Yeah. That it, that it is where we're at now, and it it's modelled on you know Western culture from all around the world, you know. I I sometimes wonder if what the Western culture that exists in Australia is trying to force Aboriginal folks to conform to that and perhaps where this conflict came from is that these folks, that's not how they want to live. I mean, I, I certainly think that was the case way back when, when when white folks came, you know, and, and I think maybe the naive Aboriginal folks were just like, oh, there's people here, are we in danger? What's going mm. on? Again, I'm just, I don't know this. I'm mm. just trying to figure out using my intuition what's happened. But Absolutely. It, it just seems as though what if like- you know, we or we say that these these Aboriginal communities are bad people because they're they're not living the way that they're not living civilized or they're breaking Absolutely. these rules and all this stuff. But like, what if they don't want to do that? What if they don't want to live the way that we say that they should live? I think that was definitely the case back when. Mm. Yeah, and we got to a position where transition and change. But Aboriginal people and the if people know the core values of Aboriginal people and our song lines, our dream time stories, our culture, our connection to, I'd love to know this stuff, the man. language yeah. and so forth, it's all around pride and respect. And when you get into trauma, people say, oh, but you can act from a better space. When you get into trauma and if you haven't been there and it comes for you and it happens, then you're going to sit there and go, now I understand what they're talking about. And it doesn't justify me throwing a brick at a police car, right? Let me clear that up and be clear. But at the same time, people then get context. Oh, wow. So if that was ongoing, consistent, I'll give you the example. You're in your house here and I walk in, just kick your door in and just grab your wife and kids. You'd fight me to the end, right? So most men would. Well, I hope they would. But in general, I don't believe that they would, most men. I'll be honest. Um, but in general, that's what should happen. And you've got to understand, Aboriginal people, imagine having that ripped from underneath yourself and then split. And some of those that were split never, ever found them until they were back in the graveyard. Some of those have never found their families again. Some don't even know where they're from. So we've got tribes across Australia, yeah. 500 different language groups. Some of those people don't even know what tribe they're from because they were separated, put into a mission, and they came out and just, that was it. No one ever found them again. They didn't know where they went. Fuck, that's and so dark, man. It's pretty crazy. And the last Aboriginal was killed in 1940s, in the 40s, which is, you know, less in, than in, 100 years ago. In what context? What do you just mean? for no reason, just for the sake of. And, like, you got to think 70s we we got um, – and going back to your conversation, I always use Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people because a lot of people say, even in my culture, will say, oh, white people, and I was like – you told me that you don't like racism, right? So why are we using white people? For me, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people, best way to treat a human being, love, kindness, empathy, and respect, the mm. greatest race on this planet, the human race when we all get on with each other. Mm. But you've got to be real too and understand why something's happening. Mm. And that's where Australia's disconnected because we've grown up where Hitler, they know more about Hitler. So when they say this particular date, everyone's like, who cares? What's wrong? And I think going back to your conversation, I don't think there's fear or, um, or shame or anything because I don't think people know enough to be ashamed of. Sure. And if you know, yeah. I met a bloke in a pub. I'll give you another example, right? We go and salute the Anzacs on Anzac Day and so we should. Love that, that they fought for our nation, right? and sacrifice their lives and their kids and grandkids are now wearing those medals with pride. But an Aboriginal man that I met up 
in Cairns. I walked past him. I had a TV show. He goes, you're that fitness fella, eh? I go, yeah, we started young. He goes, yeah, went to war and we were talking. And they, it was a story up there in the paper at the time. They went to give him his medal and it was probably within the last four years, just four years ago from back then. You know, and I think to myself, it's, he said one thing he did love and he appreciated those that he fought for beside instead of because they had the non-Aboriginal people over in this in the pub and they couldn't even go into the pub after fighting for their own country together. So the non-Aboriginal people said, well, if we he can't come in, then we ain't coming in too. So he did mm. say that. Big shout out to all those that stood up when everyone else stood down. And, yeah, why wouldn't that be a better place? Because I guarantee if war went down, you'd want me fighting beside you. And yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's crazy. All so. that bullshit goes out the window uh, real quick, doesn't bullets it? Bullets zip and by her. Mate, but can you tell me where you're from? Oh, no, I'm not fighting. Bullshit. You're not going to yeah. worry about who's – you're going to say, mate, blokes coming to our left or something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Why is it then so important? People get in a competition, who's right, who's wrong? rather than what's right and yes, what's wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Does that make sense? Oh, man. Operate from that level and we'll all be good. That's it. Well, right. what, but to have a – sorry, to do some due diligence on what you're about to open your mouth to, Yeah. now you can have a proper conversation. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I'm with you, man. I'm absolutely with you. And it's and I think that I, I, this is why I, what I was getting at before is I'm so uneducated on mm. Aboriginal history, on, on Aboriginal – traditions and it's really intriguing to me these are these are folks that existed in harmony with the land for thousands of years crazy beautiful crazy. incredible they know shit man you know it's insane like like and, and 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 we don't we don't celebrate that culture anywhere near as much as as i would like us to i, I think it's i think it's fascinating one of the biggest things now on social media is gratitude yeah. Oh, gratitude, praying, meditation, mindfulness. Aboriginal people started that many, many years ago. Mm. Connection to culture, connection to what we call Mother Earth. Yeah. Treat it with respect. Yeah. Only take what you need.